try to remember what the feeling was when you were entering the pros? Did you want to continue to dominate and kill? I never had natural confidence. I, for some reason, I think it was the things that happened to me as a younger lacrosse player, not making teams over and over again, not being recruited. I'm not naturally confident, and I, I wish I was. You know, I want to think I'm the best in, in, at what I do and playing lacrosse, but it's just not my, it's not my natural way to just be like, hey, screw everybody else. I'm the best in the game right now. It's just not how I think. It's like I have to work and almost prove to myself that I am. I think the biggest thing for me to get to that next level year after year has been investing more time in strength and conditioning and evaluating what I was doing, how can I do it differently the next year. Knowing what this does for me on field is what keeps me coming in here. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to be at my highest level, trying to be the best. Always got to train like someone's chasing you. Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Feel, feel hyped? It is the dream. I was, I was, I, I embraced it. I thought it was really cool. I look at a lot of people that play professional lacrosse and they come into New York City and they're working a job in finance or sales of some sort. I came into New York City and I embraced being a professional lacrosse player. I invested the time that I needed to do to build my brand, to be the best player on the field that I could be, but to be that professional lacrosse player in New York City, kind of get myself in certain circles. I'd go out, I'd go to the bar, I'd go to certain clubs and people knew of me as a lacrosse player in the city. And, uh, and I was that guy. I think Rob Pinnell was misunderstood in a lot of ways. And just like any athlete has evolved. And who do you think people generally believe that Rob Pinnell is? And then who are you? <laughs> From a very early part in my, you know, point in my career, I, I decided that I was going to be a professional lacrosse player. I decided I was going to invest the time into it. Part of that was social media, and I think people get this perspective of someone through social media, maybe think they're selfish, I, I, selfish or self-centered or all about themselves, or and I don't know what it is. And from early on in my career, through trying to make a professional career with lacrosse, I did what I had to do to do that, and. Um, I don't regret any of it. I, you know, the only reason that I'm still playing today was because of what I've been able to do, you know, not only on the field, but also in social media and, um, and building that brand. And for better or for worse, guys are gonna hate on it and guys are gonna have things to say against it. So I, I think I am. I, I think, you know, later in my career, you know, at this point today, I think people are, are starting to really know who I am and what I'm about, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just a, a you know a, a normal guy that wants to win lacrosse games, and I want to be the best version of myself, and I want to be the best lacrosse player in the world, and and that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's what, in my opinion, that's what everyone should strive to be, the best version of themselves, and um, they should have dreams to be the best lacrosse player in the world. I want to say I regret some of my college days at Cornell because I was a very tough leader. Um, I didn't understand why guys weren't training a certain way or pushing themselves to a certain limit in order to help the team, for us to win games and win a championship. And if you were not doing what I thought was necessary to get us there, I let you know. Um, I was a vocal leader and sometimes I wish I would have changed that, but at the same time, I. I like to think I push guys to be 
better version of themselves, and that's why we won a lot of games and won four Ivy League championships and went to three Final Fours. And I, you know, I, I so I, at the same time, I can't regret it, but I do think it had nothing to do with I'm that, you know, I'm an asshole, or um, it had to do with I want to win and I want to do everything that I can in my power to win, and I expect that same effort from those guys around me. guys over the last two seasons uh -oh. because you played on two teams in two seasons or three teams in three seasons in the PLL <laughs> yeah. something like oh I actually fucking love playing with Rock he's he's not at all what everyone said he is yeah <laughs> I, don't, I don't know you know I, I don't why do you think that is um I think I've changed I think I, I've won, I've learned a lot. I mean, I'd say more than anything, I've probably matured. Um, I've learned a lot on, you know, being a teammate and being a leader when not being a captain. I think I'm a little more comfortable in my own skin. Um, you, know, you talk about confidence and, and what I've done as a professional, I think I'm a little bit more at peace. With that, I, 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 don't, I don't feel like I have to prove to myself or to anybody what I'm capable of doing as much as I used to feel. I used to feel that pressure and I used to, you know, play that way and maybe act that way, like, you know, pissed off that, I, you know, not getting the credit that I deserve or um, chasing after something that is maybe not as important to me now. Um, you know, I think being named MVP in 2018 was important for me and just confidence wise, gold medal was probably the biggest thing that, that's ever happened. I, I've definitely changed and I, I've definitely, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing um, from, a, from a competitive standpoint. I think I'm more relaxed uh, in the team and atmosphere, on the field, not as uptight about certain things, but at the same time, you know, I'm not sure what's the recipe for success when it comes to winning games. So uh, it's kind of something that I've always battled with, that thing of wanting you know, people to want to play with you and wanting people to like you versus what's necessarily best for the team in getting to where they want to go. But uh, I think right now I'm in a, at a good spot, a comfortable spot where I think I'm playing at a, at a high level and enjoying it and, and able to be the, the teammate and leader that I want to be. Think about what you have to do to come out swinging. Because we can't come out flat. No one feels bad for us. Only two, this is us today. But think about what you have to do when that first whistle blows. You've gone through a lot. You're aware of the different versions of yourself and that you also might know how to thread the needle of like Rob Pinnell and Cornell days. Rob Pinnell with Team USA, and is that the link for you to win a PLL championship? Yeah, I, I think what, I think right now I'm, I'm at the most peace that I've ever been with me as a player, and um, I'm comfortable with the guys that are around me, and um, I'm comfortable in, with what they think of me as a player and as a person, and I think that'll allow me to be the best leader that I can be on the Redwoods that, that we're gonna need to get over that hump and get to that next level. And um, that excites me because I, I like, I, I wanna be myself. You know, when it comes to being myself in the locker room and on the field, um, I am who I am and that's what's gotten me to where I am today. Yeah, let go, let go. And that allows the teams that I'm on to be successful. Um, and that's most importantly, so I think if if I can find that, that place in the middle of being Rob Pinnell on the field and Rob Pinnell the leader and the guys that everyone wants to, uh, you know, people will listen to and, and respect when he talks, which I think, uh, you know, I've earned that at this point. And you know, I think the guys that I'm around on the team do respect me. And that's most important to me.